Here we have a Lenovo G70 that has a corrupt BIOS. User installed Ubuntu on it, and after he did so, looks like Ubuntu made changes to his BIOS, and now the system is not able to load to his Ubuntu. It's not able to load from a USB drive. It's not able to load from the CD drive, and we are not able to get this to load to any operating system, not even Ubuntu. I installed a hard drive that already had Windows 7 and Windows 10 on it, but it's not able to recognize the hard drive. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you the messages that we get when we try to boot up the system. So when we press the power button, the first thing we're going to be greeted with is the uh, Ubuntu message. Ubuntu and OK. So if we press OK, now it's trying to load from the DVD CD-ROM. Even though it says that it's trying to boot from the CD-ROM, it's not really booting from the CD-ROM. Press OK. It says check-in media. EFI, network 0 for IPv4. It's going to give the same message for IPv6. And then default boot device missing or boot failed. So we are not able to get this to boot up from any device. I do have a uh, bootable USB drive plugged in. It did not recognize it. Let me try to boot up to the BIOS menu so we can check and see if we can make any changes to the boot menu. Boot mode, UEFI. We're going to try to change that to legacy support. Boot priority, we're going to do legacy first. USB boot enabled. Oops. Uh, PXE boot to LAN. We do not need it, but it's enabled. For legacy, we do not have any options. Even though we chose our boot mode to be legacy, under legacy, we do not have any options. So it's going to try to boot up from EFI. And the first option is Ubuntu. Let's try to make that the last option. So we got it down to be the last option. Let's make uh, USB boot, USB device to be the first option. It is now the first option. DVD, CD-ROM is the second option. We do not have an option for the hard drive, even though we do have a hard drive installed on here. So uh, we have USB, DVD, network, Ubuntu, and for legacy, we do not have anything. If we go to the configuration menu, we do see that USB legacy is enabled. Let's save changes. Exit save and changes, yes. We do have a bootable USB drive plugged in. But as you will see, it gave the Ubuntu message again. And it's going to go through the same thing that we went through already. DVD, CD-ROM, IPv4, IPv6, and so on. And then it's not going to be able to boot from any device. So this is clearly a corrupt BIOS chip. We went ahead and programmed a BIOS chip for the system. So what we're going to have to do is take the laptop apart, look for that BIOS chip on the board, replace it, and everything should work. So let's go ahead and do that now. You see, let me show you this. What I did here is I pressed FN F12, and that gave me the boot menu. And as you can see, Ubuntu is the first one in the menu. DVD, CD-ROM is the second one. PXE network is the third, but our USB device is not recognized. We do have a USB device plugged in the laptop, but it's not recognized. I plugged it in the other end of the laptop using the other USB port, and we still do not have a USB device showing in the boot menu. So let me go ahead and take apart the laptop and locate where that BIOS chip is. I know that getting to the motherboard is not going to be easy because this laptop has a lot of screws, a lot of things we need to take off. We have a lot of different size screws on this, so we have to make sure to note where every screw goes in. Now what we have to do is take the front keyboard out because there are screws under the keyboard. Okay.
that's our board right here and now we have to locate where that bias chip is at it's probably on the back of the board but we were not able to get to it because it was hidden by the back cover Nortish fix all right doing good Uh, which one? Right here. That's our bias chip, UC3. So that's what we have to change. Pin number one is on the top right. What I will be doing to remove the chip is apply low melt solder. I'm not going to use the hot air station. As you can see, the chip is already moving from one side, so we did not need to use any hot air. Anytime we do not have to use hot air, we do not. Because hot air can create a lot of problems, especially if the board cannot take so much heat. And the chip is out, but I did not have my tweezers on. The chip is already out. Pin one is top right. We have to keep that in mind. Now what we're going to do is use the hot air station on low temperature. That's going to be very safe to use. So let me do something like 
maybe 250 Celsius or maybe 230 degrees Celsius I want to press it down and apply some heat and we should be all good And just to be on the safe side, I want to apply some solder from my iron. Just to be on the safe side. The chip as of now is perfectly connected. But to make it more secure. We're going to mix that solder with a new layer of solder on the pins. Okay, so we are all done with the BIOS chip replacement for the Lenovo G70. We should be able to load from a USB drive, install Windows. If our BIOS chip is not programmed properly, then we're going to have issues. Okay, so now the easy part, put the board back in. I just love that part. I honestly hate it because it takes a lot of my time. I do not have the other guy here today to help out with this. So I'm doing it on my own. And I have like six million things to do. A lot of customers ask me how do you have the patience to sit down for long hours and do what you do the answer is simple when you love what you do time really flies I come in here 10 30 in the morning we close at 6 I honestly do not know how the day ends it's like I came for an hour and went back home I do not feel the time because that's what I like to do Honestly, I do not consider this as a job. I consider it as my second home. I take pride in what I do and I do it well. Since I was a young kid, I used to open the VCR that we had home when my mom gets out of the house. We did not have YouTube back then. We did not have all the information on the web. So I used to actually get books on how to fix VCRs, how to fix TVs. And uh, this was probably when I was uh, 16. Before I went to college. I went to high school in New York. 
Manhattan, Park West High School. And I went to college in Brooklyn, Polytechnic University. I graduated with a bachelor's in electrical engineering. And as a second major, I did computer science. Northridge Fix? Hi, uh, is it? Uh, oh, yeah, Northridge Fix, yeah. Uh, I dropped my phone last week, uh, Wednesday, to an LG G6 uh, to change the. Display. Oh, yes, yes. We already have your screen on order. Uh, we did not. You can probably manage to mix your screws. But when you do a job, why not do a good job? Just put everything back the way it was. And that's what sets apart a good repair shop from a bad one. Just finishing up with the Wi-Fi cables. We have to, to route them in the same way that they were before. Only a few things left to install, and that includes our CD-ROM and our hard disk. Let's get our hard drive in. Now, most likely, the computer is going to try to boot up from an Ubuntu or from a corrupt drive. We want to have the option to boot up from a USB device. All right, so let's test. Let's test to see if the system will boot up from a USB device now and not Ubuntu. I have a bootable USB drive here. I may need to go to BIOS to set to tell the system to boot up from this, or maybe it will boot up from the USB by itself. Turn on. All right. Look at this. So now we can access our USB. We do not have Ubuntu anymore. The system can see the hard drive now. It can see the ODD drive, which is the CD-ROM. It can see our USB and everything is perfect. Let me boot up from our USB. That's it, that's the active boot disk. Very good. We're going to install Windows and call the customer to pick up. So go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed watching or if this helped you out in any way. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Subscribe for more videos and I will see you in the next video.